So in math class, you're often told that if you have x squared plus b times x, that you can solve this kind of a quadratic by completing the square. And you're told to do that, take your b term, divide it by 2, and then square it. Now, I remember that when I was in school, this really bothered me. It seems like a really arbitrary process. And I had no understanding of what, what was actually happening. I want to talk to you in this video about why does this actually represent a square? What's actually happening here? And I want to show you that because I think it'll help you understand why this is actually an awesome thing. And again, the, the goal here is that when you complete the square, you can factor something really easily. So if I had something like x squared plus 5, well, no, let's not use 5, uh, 10x. If I said, uh, factor this by completing the square, what you would do is say, oh, well, b is equal to 10. And what I have to do, according to this formula, is add 10 divided by 2 squared. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. And then by writing in 25, we've completed the square, which means, of course, we can factor this really nicely by just writing x plus 5, and then squaring that. Because x plus 5 times x plus 5 will give you right, x squared plus 10x plus 25. And that's just a nice... That's what's so nice about completing the square. You can take a quadratic and, and factor it into something wonderful like this right here. But anyway, we're not looking at that in this video. We're talking about why does this actually make sense visually? And that's the important part. So let's say we have x squared. So this is my x squared right there. And an x squared, of course, is an x squared because, well, the side lengths are, are x by x. Remember, if you multiply x by x, that's x squared. And you can think of that visually as an area. So we have a square, an x by x square. Now originally, right, before we complete the square, we're just, we're assuming that we start with something like this, which is the x square plus b times x. So what does that mean? Well, well, we know what x is. It's about this height right here, right? We have no idea what b is. It could be this long. It could be shorter than x. It could be anything. Let's assume it's around here. So basically, what's happening is you have an x squared plus bx. So bx is just b, this length, whatever it is, it could be anything, times x, which you already know is this height right here. The problem is this is not a square, right? We have this rectangular chunk plus this chunk over here, and maybe it'll work out to form a perfect square, maybe not. But most likely it won't be a perfect square. So the goal of completing the square is to take all this stuff and actually make a square. So how do we do that? Well, look what the formula says. It says add b divided by 2 squared. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm going to take a line, right? I'm going to cut this square into two pieces, right? I'll take b, cut it in half. So whatever this distance is, I'm dividing it by 2. So let's, let me just go back and redo that b divided by 2. We'll clear this off. So imagine this piece is here. We're cutting it in half. What's that going to look like? Well, now we'll get two pieces. Let me use a different color there. I don't want to switch on too much. Two pieces that are half of what we had before. And I'm separating them just so we can see it clearly. You could smash these together if you wanted to. Now, the height is still x. Right? We haven't changed that. What we did change was this width right here. Right? This is now b over 2. And now this is b over 2. And we don't, we don't have a rectangle yet. We just divided this in half. And in fact, if we can rearrange these, right, we're going to notice an interesting thing. So let me actually close off again. We're going to rearrange these pieces. OK? All right. So, so I'm going to rearrange those two pieces we just saw. Here we have b divided by 2 by x. And, and if you put the other piece here, look at the gap that's remaining. Well, again, this is b over 2, this distance. This is x, and this is x, so it fits perfectly with this square. And this distance over here is b over 2. If you look at this picture, you might notice that in order to form a perfect square, there's a piece missing. So we should add in this piece right here. And by adding in this piece, we would complete 
this square. We would actually make a square. The question is, what is this little square? Well, look at it. This side right here matches this length. That's b divided by 2. And this side right here matches this length. That's also b divided by 2. So we actually call this little square b divided by 2 times, that's a b, b divided by 2. And that equals b divided by 2 squared. So let's go back to our formula. This is a picture of completing the square. x squared, that's this square right here, plus bx. Well, we started off with bx. Remember, there's a big rectangle over here. We basically said, let's cut that in two, right? It's the same area. We're just rearranging it. So this chunk right here and this, if we put them back together, we would get this part, bx. We haven't changed anything, just rearranged it. Um, we're completing the square because we know that if we rearrange these three pieces, there's a gap over here that can complete the square if we add in an area that's b divided by 2 squared. So again, this is a visual representation of completing the square. You're actually completing a square. That's the goal. You're adding in this little piece over here. Of, it's basically a b over 2 square. And by adding that, you'll always be able to get a perfect square, just like we did in this case right here. We took this quadratic, we wrote it, right? We added in um, b over 2 squared, and then we were able to factor it into a wonderful term like this. Because every square, if you think back to what you know about squares, if it's a perfect square, right, let's say I have a square with an area of 100, well then you know you can figure out the root or the side length by taking the square root of 100, which is 10, and you get a wonderful whole number answer. The same principle applies here, it's just that we're going to factor the quadratic by taking, by finding this wonderful term squared, and then later on we can take the square root of that. That's the basic idea. Alright, hope that